Okay, so we are moving into the ch uh, lecture 32 and we will continue with bilging and um, um, so we will most probably finish up the bilging section today. <coughs> now as we have explained there are a, a couple of different ways in which you can have the uh, bilging, you can have bilging that occurs in different parts of the ship. Uh, in all our simulations so far, we have uh, uh, considered bilging to be occurring in the midship compartment of the ship. That is definitely one possibility. You have the um, bilging occurring in one compartment which is a distance which is smaller than the length. If you have the total length of the ship as length between perpendiculars, you have a small length uh, which is between two, uh, between some two fixed stations, you will have a, a compartment which has the um, uh, which has the flooding in it and bilging occurs only in that compartment. Then um, another possibility is that you can have the bilging at different other sections of the um, ship. For instance, you can have uh, bilging in the front, uh, uh, for, uh, the front part of the ship that is the bow region of the ship. You can have bilging occurring at the aft region of the ship and as you can imagine as this happens when you have the um, flooding occurring in different other regions of the ship, the ship will in case the sh uh, flooding occurs at the uh, front part of the ship that is in the bow of the ship, if some compartment there gets flooded then the ship will trim by the, uh, uh, trim by the forward, trim forward and uh, of course by what we mean by trim forward is there is the, tr uh, the draft in the forward section of the ship will become more than the draft in the aft section of the ship. So like if you consider this to be the ship, the ship will if this is the front and this is the aft of the ship, the ship will trim like this. So this is what happens if this compartment is flooded. You can look at it anyways, you can look at it as uh, one possibility is it is an increase of weight as we have already explained. The, uh, the analysis for flooding is usually done using two methods. One is using the method of added weights and one is using the method of loss buoyancy. Both the methods are exactly identical um, in the sense that um, not identical in the method of, uh, op, uh, method of calculations, they are of course different, but they are identical in their result. So you get the final, for example, if you are considering the writing arm finally, you will get the same result whether you use the method of added weight or the method of loss buoyancy. So if you consider uh, the ship to be, if you consider the, this problem of uh, flooding using the method of added weight, you can see what happens. The ship is initially on an even keel, I mean I have already described that when you say something on even keel, it means that the water line is horizontal. So initially if the ship is on even keel um, or any other trimmed condition, suppose that one uh, compartment in the bow region of the ship gets flooded, what will happen is that that region of the ship will. Uh, so there is an increase in weight in that section of the ship and the ship will trim by the forward. So the front part of the ship is actually going down as you can see it will be like this now. Now so that is another kind of problem and uh, that is one of the problems that we will consider today and as we have already described there is another possibility that I mean I just mentioned it briefly. Another possibility is that the ship can be um, flooded not exactly midships means not, not like this, uh, not exactly along the center line. So if you consider it symmetrically flooded means the port side and the starboard side are evenly flooded or we say that the amount of water that has entered on the port side is equivalent to the amount of water that has entered on the starboard side. If it is like that then uh, it is one class of problems but a second class of problems occurs when the ship gets flooded on one side completely. That is if you have the center line and uh, means if this, this is the ship, if you have a center line, uh, suppose the flooding occurs only on one side of the ship, maybe the starboard side of the ship. Now if you have a situation like this, um, then as you can see, first of all as the ship gets flooded, the, what, the, um, the draft will increase. So that means the ship will sink first of all and when this happens, the Another thing that happens is imagine you can now see that this is not exactly the centroid of this uh, water plane, it is not on this, 
because some volume is lost here if you consider the method of loss buoyancy some volume is lost here, but you have this volume. So, therefore, the centroid shifts to here shifts to somewhere away from the center line at some distance h from this end which is not equal to this b by 2 if you consider the total breadth as b this is b by 2. So, now this distance is f distance h from this edge which is greater than b, b by 2 and when this happens um, you will have healing it is unsymmetrical about the center line now the weight of the ship is unsymmetrical about the center line now that is there is more weight on the right side of the ship compared to the left side or if other way around depending on which side is flooded when this happens therefore, um, that side of the ship will heal. So, if there is more water coming here if that side gets flooded the ship will heal like this. So, this let us consider this problem first then we will go into the problem of trimming. So, both are they are just different ways of uh, looking at the problem um, different possibilities that can exist. Now, if you consider flooding this is what I talked about in case of uh, so if you consider this to be the ship. So, this is the whole ship and as you can see one compartment has got flooded here one uh, this white uh, this blue line blue color is indicating water. So, this gets flooded now as you can see it keeps getting flooded and it can of course, if there is damage this depends upon the ships damage condition because of this the this whole region is getting flooded. So, one by one by one different compartments are getting flooded and as this keeps continuously happening uh, what will happen is that the the ship will start trimming about the forward. So, ship will trim about the forward and um, um, that condition that is the secondary condition that we will simulate today. So, first of all let us consider a ship uh, let us consider a box shape vessel. So, let us consider a box shape vessel of existing at a water line W0 L0 and um, it is at a depth uh, draft initially of D i D initial it represents the initial draft. Now, uh, let us consider this is the elevation view or what we call as a profile view. Now, if we look at so this length becomes the length of the ship which is capital L and this is the draft and now let us consider that a small region gets flooded in the center. So, if you consider this to be the center midship if you can so as I have already told you midship is represented like this. So, if you consider the center if you consider the midship uh, and uh, consider the flooding to occur symmetrically about the midship. So, some region has got flooded to some height um, some height greater than the draft. So, it is flooded initially then uh, let us consider let us look at its uh, plan view. So, this is again the length of the ship. So, this represents uh, this is again the length of the ship and this represents now B this is B this distance is B by 2. Uh, this is b by 2. Now, this problem is designed in such a fashion that it allows for the the particular case that we talked about. So, it is uh, flooded the cent uh, the midship all right, but it is flooded at one side it is not flooded along the uh, means this region is flooded. So, if you have a ship it is the if you consider this to be the center line. So, so, you have the ship like this, this is the center line, it is flooded at the midship all right, but it is flooded at one side. So, in one if this is the ship, this one corner here is flooded. So, extending over the full depth of the ship of course, but it is flooded in one side. So, like this it is flooded. Now, let us consider its um, dimensions to be uh, B, this is the breadth to which it is flooded and let us consider its length to be L this is this length L and uh, now if you consider the um, 
let us say that as I have already explained this sent the sent initially the ship is at the um, upright condition and in that case this is the center line and this will be G the position of the center of gravity. Now, the position of the center of gravity does not change because from now on all the calculations will be based upon the method of loss buoyancy and but as a result of the loss remember a method of loss buoyancy implies that volume is lost from the ship automatically it assumes that area is also lost from the ship. Therefore, the centroid of this water plane area is now not going to be at the center line there at G, but it is going to be here at a distance maybe let us call it y at, a, at this point this height is let us call it h. It is the distance between the one side of the ship this side of the ship and the position where the um, ship has its uh, centroid. So, this is the uh, final condition. Now, um, how will you get h? It is very easy to get h. h can be defined as the moment of area. We can do many things. We can calculate the moment of area about the um, about some center line. It can be about that uh, where that b by 2 line, um, the region where um, uh, the it can be about the line where that um, um, g acts initially. So, along that line is a possibility, but easier because of some reasons. First of all, because we are calculating h from one side, let us calculate all the um, moments use about one edge of the this is a rectangle. So, a one edge let us take the moments about the edge. Therefore, h is defined as a moment of area about the edge divided by the total area. Now, the moment of area remember there are there is what do we have here first of all we had a completely from complete rectangle. So, this l into l into b we had a complete rectangle and of which because of flooding some volume is lost in one corner some volume is lost. Some volume is lost directly implies that some area is lost in that water plane. So, if you take that water plane area initially you have l into b and finally, you have l into b minus some area here. This area is again small l into small b. So, that much area is lost and um, so that we need to figure out. So, based on that we get the uh, moment of area about the h divided by area we will get h. So, you will get h to be l into b and its moment is means here you have l into b this is the whole area and into the position of its center of gravity which is b by 2 this is b by 2. So, l into b into b by 2 minus now a small area is gone here this is of length ca uh, length cap uh, small l it is of breadth small b and its centroid is at a distance of small b by 2. Therefore, its moment is l into b into b by 2 divided by the total area which is l into b minus l into b cap small l into b. So, this will give you your h okay, this gives you this distance h which is the position of the new centroid this is where the new centroid occurs. The initial centroid is here and uh, that is when the ship was in the water right condition uh, uh, without the flooding when flooding occurred the uh, note again that the g which is the center of gravity has not shifted, but it is only the centroid of the area has shifted to a new point. Now, why do we need the centroid of area? We will see in the next figure, we will draw it. So, this becomes h and now okay, then let us draw the other one. Now, we have always drawn sectional, uh, sectional figures sec cross sections means if you have the ship like this you make a section like this. So, we have al already drawn these sections which in the lines plan we actually call it as a body plan the body plan section will give you the different stations and all that. Now, just like that if you draw the uh, this is a box shape vessel. Now, for this we are drawing the um, so this is the section. Now, let us consider this to be the initial water line actually usually you uh,
okay this is okay this is the initial water line and the final water line and initially the ship is at uh, g that is the it is at midship section this is at g uh, i mean this is at the mid again the midship so this is g somewhere here you have g where the weight of the ship is acting and now what has happened is in this case uh, as you see from this side some area or volume has gone so what will happen the ship will tilt in this side and as a result the water line will tilt up uh, i mean the ship will the water line will the ship will tilt in this fashion up that means the water line will come down like this water line has come down so initially the water line is here w l w 0 l 0 and the ship has tilted in this direction so water line has tilted into w 1 l 1 so this is tilted by an angle phi and as a result now the um, first of all the position of b will shift here to some new point um, that means some volume is lost from here which implies that it is equivalent to saying that um, some volume is added on this side or what it means is if some volume is lost here we know that the center of buoyancy has to shift here. So, b shifts to this point b 1 b 1 and um, um, there will be and if you draw a vertical vertical to that. No, you sorry here. So, if you draw a vertical at G, you get uh, the meta center which is M B the uh, so this will give you the position of the um, meta center and the distances let us call this let us draw a perpendicular from g to y so g to uh, this point y let us call this distance as x or at least g y the distance g y as you can see is the distance between g and the new position of the centroid this is what we did in the last time it just previously we saw that we need to find the position of the centroid and the position of the centroid is required for this purpose that is to find the distance between g and the new position of the centroid so that distance is measured as gy so we get here gy is actually equal to the gy here it's h minus b by 2 you can see here how do i get this just look at this this is y here coming here so this distance that i am talking about gy is h minus b by 2 this is h and this is b by 2 so, h minus b by 2 is the distance between g and y, it is one thing we need. Then other things we need is one k b, we have to find the final k b of the ship. We always say that k b is the vertical height of the center of uh, uh, buoyancy, vertical height of the vertical distance of the center of buoyancy from the keel. Now, that distance is always measured as always me measured as half the draft, whatever is the draft. So, it is d b divided by 2 this will give you the um, k b. Now, another thing we need to calculate is b m uh, in this case b m which is equal to defined as i by v or i by del i by del that is the metacentric radius is defined as b 1 m b is equal to i by del. Now, the, the only uh, slightly um, only thing you have to know here probably here or slight catch here is in ca in the calculation of i to know, uh, note that your i now finally, um, so what we had what did we have initially we had a whole box now what happened it got flooded on one side as a result of which one small volume got lost here. Now what are we finding we are finding the i which is the moment of inertia of the water plane area. So, when you are finding the moment of inertia of the water plane area, 
then in this case this much area here is lost. So, you are actually have to find the moment of inertia of the rest of the area which is equal to the moment of inertia of the whole area minus the moment of inertia of the small region. So, that is very easy, but it is still important it is uh, it can be calculated very simply as L b cube by 12 minus L b cube by 12. So, this is about the b by 2 line. Now, as I in this case it is just easier to do all the moment of inertias about the um, one side of the uh, one side of the box. Therefore, we say that I is equal and if you remember the formula the moment of inertia of a rectangle about a edge of the rectangle is usually given as is represented as L b cube by 3 it is equal to L b cube by 12 if it is about the center line, it is equal to L b cube by 3 if it is about an edge. So, L b cube by 3 minus L b cube by 3, this is the moment of inertia of the whole rectangle now uh, about an edge means which edge, this edge, this edge. So, it is the moment of inertia about this edge. So, we have now um, Note that we always need the moment of inertia. Now, in the derivation of Bm by Bm equal to I by del, that Bm metacentric radius was derived using the assumptions. We have all done all these derivations. That uh, derivation of Bm del assume that I is always the I about the centroid of the water plane area. That means in this case, you need to calculate this I about the centroid as well. Now, you know by the parallel axis theorem that once you have the um, the moment of inertia about one edge, if you, you can just do I about that point minus A y square will give you that moment of inertia of that um, rectangle about that new position. So, that we can calculate using the parallel axis theorem which proceeds as this. So, I about the edge point or the centroid will be equal to this I which I have just written here I minus A into h square. This will give you the I this I is actually the I about the side. So, this will give you I about the edge or I about the uh, that line through edge the, the position which is at a distance edge from the side. So, from that you will get B m equal to I by del. Then once you have that um, let us look at this figure you see that if it is tilted through an angle phi from this you can directly read that tan phi is equal to g y divided by y m b y m or y m in this case g y g y we have already calculated it is equal to h minus b by 2 which is the distance between the just that distance between the g and that um, the vertical position of m or the projection of m the position of the projection of m. So, that gives you g y divided by y m. Okay. Now, um, therefore, once you have that you get k m is equal to k b plus b m y m is equal to k m minus k g. Um, let us look at this figure y m. Okay. Why is it so? Because um, remember this will be the keel. So, if you are looking at the vertical distances k m, th this vertical distance is the same as this vertical distance. So, this is k g. So, this is also equal to k g. So, k g y m y g or y k y is equal to k g. So, this k g is actually equal to y k y which is equal to k g because of this you can get this expression. Now, we know all these things k g we know we have to know k g there is no way to calculate it k g is the center of gravity of the ship or the box shape vessel the vertical position that needs to be known and k m has to be known from hydrostatic and this is a box shape vessel anyway. So, you know you can use the formula that k m is equal to uh, t by 2 plus uh, d by 2 plus uh, b square by 12 d that is a known formula for box shape vessels where d is the draft of the ship draft of the vessel and when you have that you can get it as 
d by 2 plus b, b square by 12 d that will give you the uh, k m or in case of a, if you are dealing with a large scale ship the value of k m will be given from the hydrostatic data. So, so from the hydrostatic data or from the hydrostatic particulars you get hydrostatic uh, curves you get the uh, k m value k g value has to be known it has to be given it has to be given by in the problem itself and once you have that you find y m as we have seen y m comes uh, as k g itself then no y m uh, y g is equal to I mean k y is equal to k g and as a result you get y m the distance between y and the meta center as k m minus uh, k y. So, that once you get that then you you can just use the formula that tan phi is equal to g y divided by y m. Now, that will give you phi which is the angle of heel. Therefore, in this particular case uh, where we had um, a ship <coughs> um, which is now flooded at 1. So, you have the ship which is flooded on 1 in the midship section, but along on one side close to one side it is not flooded in the center line, it is not flooded symmetrical to the center line, but it is flooded on one side. When this happens the ship initially sinks as a result of which its water line goes up and the draft increases and then the ship heals okay. uh, depending on which side goes down or which side which side gets flooded depending upon that that side will either will go down and um, uh, either way you look at it that is either the uh, if you look at it in case of weight you see that weight has increased there. So, it has to heal there it is comes as one of the many problems that we have done in the shifting of weights. In fact, the inclining experiment itself was de devised using this that is you shift a weight from along the deck you shift a weight from one side to another you see that the ship heels in that direction and then you calculate the uh, heel and the horizontal distance of the center of gravity mode and the gm that is the inclining experiment. Now, so just like that in this case the ship gets flooded. So, additional weight comes let us say on the right side and uh, uh, because of that the ship heels to that side um, or if you look at it the other way around ship loses its volume there it is still the same thing ship heels again to the right side okay either way uh, then so um, so this explains one type of problem dealing with the uh, ships um, flooding now we'll look at one problem as such that is you can have suppose you are told that there is a box shape vessel of length 60 meters breadth 9 meters and it is floating at a draft of 5 meters and it has a kg of 3 meters you are asked to find the list if a midships compartment of length 6 meters and breadth 6 meter is bilged. Therefore, uh, it is a midship compartment therefore, it is occurring at a uh, in the midship, but it is the problem says that it is occurring um, the problem is not it, it is, but the figure is given along with the problem which says its problem is something like this. So, you if you look at the. Um, just like I explained the previous problem it comes something like this. So, you have the center line and in this case the ship a midships compartment somewhere here a region is flooded and the breadth of the ship initially is 9 meter this is 9 meter and a breadth of 6 meters. So, something like this one compartment like this. of 6 meters. So, this is of uh, breadth 6 meters. So, out of the 9 meters 6 meters length is this region is flooded. Now, uh, this is the same problem that we have done. First of all we need to find the position of the centroid here somewhere as you can see more volume is lost here and directly more area is lost here. If area is lost here area is still available here we see that the centroid should shift to the here so, it will shift like this. So, centroid will shift like this. So, from this point it shifts here and this distance we have called as h as in the previous derivation this is h and um, this is b by 2. So, this is b by 2 and that is h and uh, 
Now, uh, the question is to find the list. So, because of a uh, flooding like this, because of the um, ship flooding like this, it is seen that the ship finally first sinks and then heals just like I said. So, let us see how this problem is to be done. So, first of all we need to find, we use the uh, formula intact volume before flooding equals intact volume after flooding. So, this is the most general formula intact volume before flooding is equal to the intact volume after flooding. Intact volume before flooding is L B D I length breadth into the draft initially equals L B D B minus L B D B. So, this tells you the intact volume after flooding which is L B D B capital L B into D B which is the uh, bilged draft, the draft after the ship has bilged. Uh, minus L B D B small l small b is the compartment volume small l represents the length of the compartment b represents the breadth of the compartment I mean that small region of the compartment which is flooded. So, this thing so l in l into b will give you the uh, area and into draft bilged. So, that will give you the volume of the compartment that is flooded. So, as I said before this equation just says that I mean what it says that the intact volume before flooding is equal to intact volume after flooding is the same as saying the, the total weight after flooding is equal to the initial weight of the ship. This equation is actually the same as if as if the total weight of the ship after flooding is equal to the initial weight of the ship plus the volume the weight of water added. So, it is just saying a mass conservation it or shifted it becomes a volume conservation. So, that that is this equation L B D I is equal to L B D B minus small l B D B. So, from this you get D B in this problem. Since you have L B you are given the initial draft you are told the L B which is the uh, the volumes the, the dimensions of the compartment that is being flooded. So, once you have all this you can get D B which is the uh, bilged draft first step. Now, we need to find the position of the uh, H which is the centroid of the area. So, you need to find the centroid of the area that is based on what we have done so far it is very simple. So, what you have here you have so you have area and you have its distance of centroid you make a table like this distance of its centroid. So, that that area is there distance of the centroid and uh, moment. So, you have distance of the and so initial area is the L into B is the tot area of the total uh, sh shape total uh, box that uh, water plane and distance of the centroid is B by 2 you find its moment. Then you have an area of L into B in this case its breadth is given as 6 meters and length is given as some 6 meters. So, based on that 6 by 6 area like as we have discussed here in this figure this 6 by 6 um, the 6 by 6 region is flooded. So, this area is now lost and therefore, it is minus minus L B into distance of this is B by 2 and you calculate moment. As you know moment is just this just this first column into the second column multiplied by the second column. So, it gives you this and and finally, you need to find the final h which is equal to the final moment final moment divided by the final area. Therefore, like this this will give you the final moment this will give the final moment and this will give you the final area. So, just doing this you will give you the h this is the distance of the position of the centroid from this edge. So, this is the side. So, distance from this side is here. So, this this distance will give you the um, position of h which is the um, 
centroid of the area, final centroid of the area. Then uh, remember what the main purpose of our work is to find tan phi which is equal to given by g y by y b y m. This was explained to be the uh, equation for tan phi. So, g y as first thing we need to calculate is g y which is equal to we have seen it is equal to h minus b by 2. I mean I have already described it, no need to describe it again h minus b by 2. This will give you um, for this problem just we have already calculated h which is the distance of the uh, from the centroid from the edge from the side we have seen the distance of h from, um, we have seen the distance of h uh, from a, from one edge we have seen the distance of the position of the centroid from one edge that is what we have measured as h so h minus b by 2 then we need to find i this is one important thing first remember as i have already mentioned bm this is to calculate bm using this formula our purpose is to calculate bm using this formula i by del del is a underwater volume and um, i so you need to calculate i in this i is the moment of inertia of the final water plane which is actually the whole water plane minus the uh, so it is the whole water plane minus the water plane uh, minus the small area that is lost due to the flooding so that whole area minus the small area lost due to flooding so that much area the remaining area moment of inertia of that about the centroid so it is a moment of inertia about the centroid and not about an edge or about the uh, about the symmetrical center line it is not about that it is about that centroid now to get get that as we have already seen it is best to calculate i about one side use the parallel axis theorem and calculate i about that edge or the centroid so first we calculate i about the side which is given as l b cube by 3 minus l b cube by 3 so this will give you i about the side then you do i about the uh, edge point is given by i about the side minus a h square do this this will give you the formula so in this case you will get uh, then you do bm equals i by del and this will give you an answer of about 1.28 meters. Now you have you are given in this problem kb 2.68 therefore kb plus bm will give you km kb plus bm will give you km that is equal to um, 3.98 meters km then kg is given for the ship it is given to be 3 meters it is already given in the problem 3 meters and we have already seen that y, y k y is equal to kg from the figure therefore y m is equal to k m minus y k y which is equal to uh, you can see that um, 3.98 minus 3 so this is about 0 0.98 meters so this gives you the uh, value of ym and remember what we were supposed to do is to calculate tan phi given by gy by ym now it becomes straightforward we have already calculated gy which is equal to h minus b by 2 um, h minus b by 2 gives you the gy the distance through which the center line has shifted and um, y m gives you the distance between that y and the meta center. So, this will give you, you using this equation we can get the value of uh, g y by y m which is equal to the tan of the angle of phi. So, you get the angle of phi in this problem to be about 6.38 degrees. So, this is one sort of problem which um, we work on. Now, we move into a the second type of problem that I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, lecture that is in case in like we mentioned in this we have seen in this figure also instead of having um, the bilging occurring at any of the um, instead of the bilging occurring at the midship compartment like right here this is the problem that we have concerned so far deals with that we consider that the bilging occurred in the midship compartment here instead of that happening 
Now, we are going to consider bilging to be occurring at one end compartment, most likely in the forward side, here it floods in the forward side and uh, one of course, we are not considering progressive flooding, one side gets flooded and uh, that is a problem that we are considering next. Now, <coughs> so in this case we have, let us consider the ship, the box. So, you have the box shape vessel and because, um, so one compartment like this in the front part of the ship gets flooded. So, this thing, let us say that there is a hole here, this compartment gets flooded here, this is of length small l, this is of small l, the total length of the ship is capital L. So, this uh, compartment gets flooded. Initially, let us assume that this is the water line initially, it is and uh, therefore, the initial draft is D initial, D i is the initial draft and finally, the because of its uh, bilging, now because of this bilging, to, uh, just like I explained the previous problem, in this case also something happens that is, the ship is like this initially, to, uh, it is initially at some draft. So, in the forward side of the ship, one compartment has got flooded as a result of which uh, this compartment gets flooded and initially the ship sinks because of the added weight the ship sinks. So, there is an increase in draft and then there is a uh, in this case um, since this side has now more weight than this side because of this unevenness in weight this will trim like this. Okay, the ship is going to go down at the forward side. So, the front part of the ship will trim now. So, this is a this is the new process that we are trying to uh, mathematically study here. Okay, so, so, initially the draft increases to d b and then the ship trims and it goes up the draft increases to d f. So, the draft final draft is now um, d f that is the um, that water line is now let us call this to be w 1 l 1 this is the final water line where uh, the uh, ship has uh, finally, the ship has come to this position. Now, um, we will have here g this is the position of G, the centroid um, initially. Then uh, at initially at G, let us assume that the ship initially it is B0. Now, because of its uh, trimming, now the B uh, shifts to um, It is a loss of buoyancy. So, the, the B is now here. So, this is this is B 1 or B 2 I will call it. Now, um, so the final position of the center of buoyancy is B 2 and m is the position of the meta center. This is the same explanation as in the previous figure, weight of the ship acts here w. Um, so, b 1 is the position of the uh, center of buoyancy, b 2 is the position of this uh, cent b 2 in this is the position of the center of buoyancy. Now, um, same method as we did if you take uh, if you take that uh, the distance through which the same concept that is in this problem the only difference is that we had last time we had one um, in the last problem we considered that one area is lost on one side as a result of which the that center line shifted to slightly above uh, slightly higher um, slightly uh, the other side to the uh, starboard side. Now, in this problem instead of the 
the center line shifting like this, we are talking about G shifting here. Okay, it is this shift. It's no longer this shift, but it is this shift now. Now similarly, so this area here, this is flooded. Okay, this part of the ship is flooded. So um, this out of this, some area will be lost in the front part of the ship. So how much distance does it shift to the same same way? That is, you take the moment of the area divided by the total area. If you take the water plane area, remember water plane area will be like this. So if you take, so if your water plane area will be a section like this. So water plane area will be like this. Now at that point, you will have some area lost here. So by doing that, we can find the, it's very easy. If you take the moment, you will see that if this is shifted by L, and if you assume its centroid to be at L by two, you will see that the uh, this will be shifted by L by two. So this will be the position of the so the distance of the centroid. Now let us call this to be the half perpendicular. So the distance of centroid from half perpendicular is given to be L by 2 which is this, this is L by 2, this distance. As you know this whole distance is L, this is L by 2, this distance from here and therefore it is L by 2 minus L by 2, small l by 2. Okay, so, this will give you the distance of the centroid from the half perpendicular. Now, as you can see in this figure, this figure we need. So, as you can see in this figure, um, the distance of G from the um, half perpendicular is again equal to L by 2 always because this is again the method of loss uh, method of loss buoyancy and the center of gravity remains at g now the only thing we need to do here is um, let us consider the weights acting now okay so consider this so what do we have we have um, so <coughs> about this new position of the centroid that is what we call as a center of flotation the center of flotation is now here. Remember, center of flotation is defined as the centroid of the water plane area, and in this case, some water plane area is lost in the front because this side is trimmed, uh, this side is bilged, and uh, because of this bilging, some area is lost here. Because this area is lost here, the water plane area, sh the centroid of the water plane area shifted here from the center, from here it shifted here. Now, this is the center of flotation, and if you take now moments about the center of flotation, we see that at G, which is the position of the center of gravity, there is a weight W acting downwards. Okay, and uh, the position of the center of buoyancy is here, so there is no weight acting upwards. It's along that same axis. So the net moment that is acting, which is trying to cause the trim, is this W, the weight of the ship, into L by two, which is small L by two, which is that this distance. So W the weight here, this W into small l by 2, this much is the moment causing trim. So we write the trimming moment equals weight into l by 2. This is your trimming moment, which is W into l by 2. Or um, now, once you have the trimming moment, how do you calculate the change in trim? That is very easy we have already done many times the change in trim equals the trimming moment divided by uh, the mctc moment to change the trim by 1 cm so uh, change in trim is equal to trimming moment divided by mctc now uh, the trimming moment is w into l by 2 divided by mctc will give you the change in trim, which we usually write as trim T or change in trim. Uh, change in trim will be given by W into uh, L by 2 by MCTC. This will give you the change in trim. Now, uh, just like before, once you are able to find the total change in trim, you need to find the change in trim aft, change in trim forward. Um, 
same same way same equations that is if I mean in the previous chapter not here, here we have used different notations please do not get confused between small l in our previous chapters that is the chapter dealing with trim where we were doing the small l actually represented the uh, distance between the half perpendicular and the center of flotation. So, that is small l if that is so then the change of trim aft is given by small l which is the distance between the aft perpendicular and the center of flotation divided by capital L which is the total length of the ship distance between perpendiculars um, multiplied by the total change of trim. So, that will give you the change of trim aft. So, L by small l by capital L into so in this case just in this case remember small l represents not the um, distance between the aft perpendicular and the uh, center of flotation but it represents L by 2 represents this distance small l represents this distance. So, this is L by 2. Now, but the concept remains the same to get the change of half draft I need to find the distance between half perpendicular and the center of flotation center of flotation is this. So, it will be L by 2 minus small l by 2. So, L by 2 or L minus small l by 2 into L into change of trim this thing. So, L minus L by 2 L into W into L by 2 divided by M C T C. So, this will give you the um, uh, this will give you the uh, the total change in trim in the aft side and if you want to find the change in the trim in the forward side the instead of L minus L you using the previous notations if L is the distance between small l is the distance between the aft perpendicular and the center of flotation uh, you what you do is you do um, capital L minus small l div uh, divided by capital L that will give you the distance from the instead of taking this distance you take this distance the front distance that will give you the uh, distance um, that will give you the change in trim in the forward side of the ship and once you find the change in trim forward change in trim aft what you generally have to do is you change whatever is the initial trim you add this final trim uh, the you change add this change in trim aft to the initial trim aft and you will get the final trim aft change in trim forward to the initial trim forward will get the change uh, you will get the final trim forward final and that will give you the final drafts also that will give you the final draft in the forward and the aft section ok. So, this is we have explained now two types of dealing with the bilging problems any kind of bilging problem will be having I mean now that we have done two extreme types of problems means we have studied the case when the ship can heal and we have studied the case when the ship can trim due to uh, bilging. These are mainly the two types of process and of course, you know that you can just extrapolate this to say that if you have a time dependent bilging means as the time goes on the uh, the flooding keeps continuously happening and if you are trying to study that problem um, then of course, it does not become healing as such it becomes a case of rolling it becomes dynamic dynamic process and not a static study and since this course is on hydrostatics we are not dealing with the dynamic process of flooding though it is definitely a very important point uh, and a very important topic you it is a very um, very active study of active area of research. So, uh, you that gives you different ways of calculating the um, the trim or the heel as a result of uh, bilging. So, uh, these are two extreme cases when you have uh, bilging in the front part in the front part of the section this gives you that how to find the trim and in case you have uh, bilging occurring on one side of the ship one side of the ship and not the other side that gives you another weight of calculating the heel. So, you can combine the two to calculate very complicated cases where you have um, some bilging not at the center not at the end uh, somewhere in between um, and the whole process is becomes a combination of these two you can get the trim and the heel due to this process and uh, combine it and get the final value of heel and trim it might be a combination of two and you get the value of heel and trim. So, this 
Okay, so with this I will stop here today, um, thank you. Thank you.